I finally found something that I enjoy using with this boat and that I can put in the back seat of my truck. Again, it's just like a large electric drill. So. Hey guys, I'm Jared with Striker Boats and we are out here on the West Coast on our brand new LX Rib 360. So this is an 11 foot seven boat and it's it's the perfect size for a tender for a family of four or, or even six. It's got a good amount of room inside of the boat. We have a bow locker up front that also can house your fuel tank and your goodies under the floor. We, uh, so there's a battery tie down in there. I got my jacket in there right now. So underneath there, there is a line that runs to the back and that is where we can run our fuel lines. So you can kind of keep everything out of the way and tucked away. This boat is rated for up to a 30 horsepower. Now, typically I would suggest running a 20 horsepower. It's nice. It's I find the 20 horsepower is always that perfect balance between weight and portability and ease of use. It just sips the fuel and you're going to get very good performance on a boat of this size. Now, today we have the new Merc 7.5e. This is an awesome little motor, these little Avatars. So, you know, initially when, when the electric motors first come out, we've been waiting for the battery technology to get to the point where they were actually practical to use. The last 15 years, I've been using small outboards for stuff like this as a tender on my bigger boats. But what I've found, and as long as many of our customers and many people that we've talked to in the industry is these little outboards with the new fuel and their little carburetors, they don't tend to make it through a season without having some sort of issue with the carburetor coming up or not starting and they're super smoky. There's oil dripping out of it. So the end of last season, I started using the Avatar. A couple cabin trips, just as a tender. It's very easy to use. It's super lightweight. And because it's the parts can be compartmentalized, you can actually remove a lot of that weight from the system. So if you're looking at like a similar, like this would be about the equivalent to a three or four horsepower, somewhere around there. It feels really good out in the water. The way that they've engineered it, they have a large prop, thrust prop that does, it will show you here in a second. It does feel really good out on the water. The outboard itself, it's essentially a large electric drill. So I can put it in the back seat of my truck. I can put it any way I like. I can remove the battery. Um, I can, it, it's just very simple. It has good battery life. My, like my six horsepower, my three to six horsepower gas motors, they, it feels exactly the same while I'm out here. They're, you're not gonna plane the boat, but what you're gonna get is a very easy to use, compact outboard that works for when you need it to work. Charge time's very quick. While I'm underway, so full throttle, it will run just over an hour of full throttle. Now, if I'm trolling around or I wanna ease off a bit, it will show roughly 20 hours of, of a slower usage that you're still moving along nicely. So for me, the advantages of having something like this are huge. Uh, the portability factor, putting it inside of the cabin of my ocean boat while we're en route. And there's some really cool features, the way that you, this, so for instance, this tiller handle, you can you flip this down. Now, when you put this in the down locked position, you can add, this is actually a handle. So when you're carrying the motor, this shaft, your tiller, is a handle for carrying it. And it balances that center of weight very well. And we will get a clip of that later. Now, when you're out on the water, you simply click that up, you pop that back down and, and you got an adjustable tiller handle. That is just, it's just really nice to have. So you can have it up here. You can kind of set wherever you like the preference of this particular tiller. The operation of this outboard is incredibly easy. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's clean. It doesn't make any noise while you're out on the water. And another really cool feature is that, I'll show you this in a second. To get the outboard on and off, you can leave the transom bracket attached to the outboard. So essentially, I pull this lever here and the outboard pops completely off. Like this outboard's off. Now when I want to put it back on, I just drop that in and we're good to go. So 
you can imagine, like I don't leave the outboard attached to my tender on the roof of my boat. So if we were ever in an emergency situation and we needed to drop this outboard on, what I do is I leave the transom bracket on the boat and I simply drop the motor on. Like there's no screwing of the thumb screws. There's no messing around. Everything's ready to go. There's no trying to start the motor. So the reality is while you are in an emergency situation, this is actually gonna provide you a much better and quicker response and a better opportunity to get you out of that unsafe environment really quick. They are right now a little bit spendy, but the value is here. It's like when Tesla first come out, I knew I wanted one, we got one and we absolutely loved it. Like there is no part about that car that I don't enjoy owning or having. It does everything I want it to do. The convenience of just plugging it into charge, not having to deal with fuel or maintenance. There's, there's no maintenance on these outboards essentially. They're, they're a brushless system. They're in, so far so good and I can't say enough good things about these little outboards. We are gonna be carrying on through this segment. We're never gonna completely get rid of gas outboards. That's, I don't believe that's a reality, but at this point for what this offers you, I think you're gonna be very surprised at how well it works. Let's do a little speed test just to see. So we have a 11 foot seven rigid hull boat. Um, I'll get my Navionics out and we'll just show you guys kinda what we're looking at. We'll just show you guys what this little guy is capable of. You know, it's it's a great little motor that's gonna push you around. You're never gonna, you're not gonna plane a boat of this size with a three horsepower motor, but what you're gonna do is get to where you need to go. Um, and we'll show you guys out here. So I got my Navionics app open, right there. Okay. So we have Ange on the boat. Say hi, Ange. Hi. <laughs> So we're going to do a little speed check. Okay, so right now um, we're cruising on the second setting and we are going four kilometers an hour. So, you know, it doesn't seem that fast, but uh, if we needed to get somewhere, I mean, we'd be, so right now I have 10 hours of runtime. So 10.5, 10.4. So if we're thinking we're going four kilometers an hour and we have 10, 10 hours of battery life, we're gonna go 40 kilometers. You know, 40 kilometers is a, is a pretty good run by any measure. That's a considerable run. So for a safety standpoint, you know, having an outboard that, that you can get out and you can run 40 kilometers going this speed now, you know, four kilometers an hour isn't, it's not huge. Okay, so let's, let's go a little faster. So we'll go, we're about three quarters throttle right now. Now we're going, so we're going, what is it? We're going 6.3, 6.6, 6.5. So we have two hours of runtime at this speed. Um, exactly two hours. If we were just to leave this just like this. And so we'd get 12 kilometers. So you're gonna cover less ground. You're gonna get there faster. You know, we are moving quickly away from the shore. Uh, this is a, a good, decent clip. There's nothing wrong with this. If I needed to go 12 kilometers like this, it wouldn't be an issue. Typically I'm, I'm not, often 12 kilometers away from the shore in my personal boating. Now, if I'm doing a crossing, then yeah, I'm gonna be a little further away. But, you know, it's for, for what it is, it, it certainly worked well. Now, if I amp this thing up, so, so at full throttle, I have 46 minutes left. Now we've been out for 25 minutes already. We are going eight. Let's just get move around a bit here. Oh, we got a nice little log over here. Eight and a half. So 
that's probably not the most efficient speed. So we're gonna go back down. We're, now we're going 6.6 .6 again. So just a shy hair, we're about three quarters throttle. We have two hour runtime. So right now we're gonna make it 12 kilometers on what we have left. Should we have started with a full charge about 25 minutes ago, uh, we would have we would have been further. Now, for our, we're an off grid system where we are on the West Coast. So for us, we have a ton of solar. We can plug our battery in every day. And as this technology moves forward and outboards get bigger, for us, we have power station on the dock that's compl that's supplied completely with solar. So when we come back, we can just plug our outboards into our dock. We get our sunlight for free, and it's an initial upfront cost to set that stuff up, but everybody on the West Coast has solar. It's just part of the deal. And then now essentially all of our, you know, we want to go grab our crab traps or our prawn traps. Now essentially we're out there getting those resources for for. Well, it's hard to say free because we have an upfront cost, but you know, we can do this year after year after year now for that just the initial upfront cost. Having the outboard, it's incredibly quiet. So while we're out on the water, it's, it's quite peaceful. You can hear everything going on around you. Earlier today, when we first went out, the humpback whale come up behind us and uh, you, I heard him, which I, with my little gas motor, you know, beep, 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 it's, it's, they're just, it just gets in your head. Like you kind of lose some of that serenity, some of the reasons that you're out here in nature to begin with. So um, is electric the answer for every situation and everybody? No, and there will always be the naysayers. And you know, you guys can have it, you win. But for us, it's incredible. And and I and I really like where this technology is going. And I like having it as an option for our life. So uh, for me, uh, we're gonna we're gonna enjoy the best of both worlds and we hope you guys do too. We're back at the dock and I'm just gonna show you kind of how simple it is. Now this has always been, our dock is quite high and a lot of docks on, on the ocean or wherever, they can be high. Getting in and out of a boat that's moving around can also be tricky. So I'm gonna take this off how I leave it. I'm gonna leave the transom bracket on because that's typically how I use this thing now. And I'll show you what I do uh, to make this as easy as possible. So. I pop the battery compartment open. I pull the outboard, the battery out. The battery's 17 pounds. So that does remove quite a bit of weight from my system. Now we got a nice little cover in there for the electrical connection. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this little lever. I've, I've locked my handle down. I'm gonna pull this lever. And what that does is release the outboard. Now, you can see that, and this is super light. What I do is this is that handle I was talking about. So this is this is incredibly lightweight. It's easy to use. Now I can kind of do what I like with it. So now that that's pretty easy to operate. The transom bracket is left on the boat again. So that's quite easy. So this is kind of how I find the easiest way to do this. I'm going to leave this outboard down on the dock here. There's no reason to bring it up, but I'm going to bring the battery up and just get her back to a full charge. So this is as simple as laying her over. doesn't matter what side it goes on. These outboards, because there's no oil or nothing that's really damaging. Um, that It's as simple as that. I've never owned an outboard that's as easy to deal with. Now, of course, you look down at the boat, the transom brackets on there, and it's ready to go for our next use. Mm -hmm. 